Absolutely. This uh, seems to be at least uh, the first uh, result from uh, that tense phone call between uh, Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, so uh, three elements in uh, this uh, improvement for uh, the access to aid in Gaza. The reopening of the Erez crossing, that's in the north of Gaza, so that is key uh, for the northern part where uh, the situation is the most dire in the Gaza Strip. Then there's the temporary use of the Ashdod port, which is north of that northern uh, border of Gaza, so it's uh, further up in Israel. That's going to increase the deliveries that are going through uh, that port and the increase of deliveries of direct aid uh, through Jordan, that is through the Kerem Shalom uh, crossing. So increasing uh, the amount of aid, uh, the White House responding immediately to this announcement, saying that uh, those moves must now be fully and rapidly implemented. And that is really uh, the key, because these announcements are good, but there are still a lot of questions. How many trucks will be allowed to go through these different uh, border crossings? We've seen in the past that aid agencies have criticized Israel for saying that, yes, they do open some crossings, but if they don't let the trucks through or they hamper that access too much, with controls, with screenings, they are preventing aid from uh, getting in. Then there's the question of how aid will be distributed, and we've seen with the killing of those uh, aid workers and with incidents with aid convoys in the past that the real problem is how do you get that aid from the border crossings distributed within uh, Gaza? And of course, what of the Rafah ground operation that Benjamin Netanyahu said just Sunday that he would go through with, that nothing would stop him. If you listen to the Americans, they don't want to see that happen. So will he keep going through with that or will he decide to back off? And speaking of the Americans then, what would this shift in U.S. policy actually look like, do you think? Well, for, for now, uh, it's all words. Uh, there have been, uh, cl there's clearly been a shift over the past month or so. Uh, and you saw Joe Biden talking uh, about a red line about a month ago when it came to the Rafa ground operation. Uh, then there was the killing of uh, the aid workers from World Central Kitchen. And that seemed to have uh, changed it all. But uh, as I was saying, so far it had been only words. And that started to change actually uh, last week when uh, the United States states abstained at the U.N. Security Council, letting that resolution uh, pass through. And that could be one of the options for the Americans if they decide to shift that policy or to act on their uh, threat, their ultimatum, is to uh, stop being this diplomatic shield for the Israelis at the U.N. Security Council. Uh, the other more complicated option for the Americans is to stop being Israel's top weapons suppliers. There are two options. One is conditioning that military aid to Israel. Uh, the other one is uh, cutting or stopping uh, some of the weapons. So far, the Americans don't seem to be wanting to go uh, that way. Definitely not for defensive uh, weapons, uh, but that could be an option, especially since Joe Biden is also getting pressure uh, from within his own party to stop sending those weapons. But for now, as we've seen in recent days, they are still following through on those weapons.